Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's uh, let's take a look here at this new title called Boss Constructor. This is a new game um, I've been playing for a little bit in uh, my spare time here on on Steam. It was given to me by the developer to, to take a peek at. Tried it out on the stream a while back. This is a, a fun game where you basically, you pilot a spaceship in a procedurally generated um, universe, so to speak, and you have missions to go on if you want to play in exploration mode. You can do challenge modes if you want. You can do an endless mode type thing. Um, you can just do evolutions where you you, you ba make a basic ship and see what it evolves into. My favorite game mode is uh, exploration. I like I like the idea of incrementally increasing my my uh, my ship's quality and stuff as I go. So let's just dive in and, and I'll let the gameplay speak for itself for the most part. We'll generate a new universe. Uh, we're gonna play on, a, on hard difficulty here just so that the enemy prevents us presents us with a little bit more of a challenge in a huge huge galaxy size. We'll choose the uh, the default starting ship Alpha. And then we're going to go for probably a... Let's go for a weapons focus, just so we can speed things up a little bit here in the early game. And uh, go ahead and start our new thing here. So we could read through this whole thing here, but basically uh, a universe has been generated for us to play in. Sounds good. And uh, this is where we are right now. There are three missions for us to choose from. Before we do that, let's go ahead and add our, our little goodies that we got, the uh, extra weaponry. We've got two extra fireball... Uh, high energy projectile weapons. We got two extra missile launchers and a targeting laser. Don't really need to use the targeting laser, and it would also make our ship asymmetrical, so probably not going to use that just yet. But the fireballs, we'll go ahead and drag those down and add those to our our, our, our weapons array at the front of the ship. And then we're probably going to modify this a little bit. And one of the things that's really cool about this game is that um, it will intuitively change your key bindings. Um, and change the way that uh, the propulsion system is set up so that uh, if you just move your power, like move stuff around, it will know what to do with them. So for, for instance, if I take one of these propulsion things and I do something like this, it's going to know that this, is, this one's going to be useful for rotating to the right um, or for just going as a strafe, like to the right directly. And vice versa with this one here. And you can actually see that dynamically as you move things around. Um, right now my keyboard shortcut for weaponry here is the up key or my one of my my, my mouse buttons to, to fire my weapons, my forward facing weapons. Um, you can see here that the E key is used for strafing to the right. The A key, this is going to pivot us that way. D key is going to make us go that way. If we did something like this where I just like grab this thing and turn it around, all of a sudden it's going to just dynamically instantaneously update. And we can see here now that uh, A, if we want to go to the right, uh, sorry to the left, these two would fire, and uh, this other one here would fire to provide uh, motion in that direction. Now, if you ever wanted to manually control this, you, you can. Um, not certain why you'd really want to mess around too much with propulsion. It seems to do a very good job, but it is an option, so it's kind of nice. Let's go ahead and pull these weapons back into a nice little tight spot right back there. And uh, go ahead and drag this guy right there. Now, this ship has a... It's a very fast ship to start with here, but we have... Uh, not too much available energy. We only generate 9 gigawatts based on these three solar panels. We have an ore container to collect ore as we're out in missions. We have lots of prop lots of propulsion rockets. The issue here is that these, these weapons cost a ton of energy. Each fireball is going to consume, if you read into that tooltip there, energy per shot's 2 gigawatts. So if I fired 4, that's going to cost me 8. Um, the peak energy per second though is 4 gigawatts each because they can fire once every half second. So I can't even support all of these guns just yet, but um, that's okay. We're still going to try to alpha strike down some enemies. So let's go ahead and dive in. We'll do one of these missions here. Uh, we're going to pick a mission. Looks like we're going to take a hard mission to start. We've got two enemies versus one enemy. I guess we'll go for the easier mission just in case because we are playing on harder difficulty and I don't want to you know, lose my very first mission here. So our first mission here, we got to defend our ally for up to 60 seconds and... Uh, we also need to, that's a landmine by the way, we want to stay away from that. Actually it's a space mine, excuse me. So on the mini-map down here we can see our allies right down there, we got some some hazards, there's some nebulas and stuff. That's the exit point, there's some solar winds, there's the enemy going down that way and if I wanted to I can change my my view and I can go check, over, check out on them over there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, control the view ourselves a little bit, make sure we have a good eye, good eye for where he's coming from. And we're going to launch an, a, a strike, hopefully taking out some of his weapons before he does anything to us. Oh, he's actually going for our, our ally, which is great. Okay, let's get the hell out of the path of these weapons. Try to get behind him if at all possible. Weapons have a maximum range depending on the weapon type, so we got to be a little bit aware. 
He has some energy draining mechanics there at the end. Oh, Ooh. he just triggered the landmines there. And we took out one of his, uh, some of his weapons. So he's now, he's, uh, shaped funny. He's got some weight issues where he's got no, uh, no real balance to his ship. Makes it very easy for us to just kind of come up behind and pick him apart a little bit here. Oh! You need to be cautious here. We don't actually want him to actually get any hits in because we're playing on that harder difficulty, which means that if our stuff gets blown off of our ship, we only have a 20... like a 75% chance that it gets salvaged. I'd really prefer to not lose any of our initial weapons. Every time I fire, I lose the ability to actually control my ship because we have no energy. Try to line up for a good shot. There we go. Salvage his repair bot. That's pretty useful. All right, so we've already done our defended our ally for 60 seconds. Now we need to go scanned marked areas. Let's go ahead and just sort of troll around a little bit here. We do have enough energy that we can still control the ship pretty well. You'll notice that we get all the way down to three percent energy because uh, oh, we're basically maxing the ship out just by using the engines. You have to be cautious about these, uh, these asteroids. They can damage you if you just drive right into them. That is the solar winds. will push you and kind of make it a little bit difficult to navigate. We get to this, this sector, little square thing to scan it, and that one up there as well. You can see as I go straight through the solar winds, we're going to drift to the right a little bit. And I'm just going straight, just trying to fly straight, and it just kind of swung me around in an opposite direction. It looks like we have two more scans over there to be done. And we did bring along that uh, that ore container in the back of the ship, so... There's a couple different ways you can get asteroids, uh, get minerals from, from from space. Number one is to shoot down mining ships. They, they usually have ore in their cargo holds. Also, you can shoot asteroids that have these little crystal-looking rock things on them. They take quite a bit of damage to actually blow up, but once you've done it, they'll drop some, some minerals into the air. All you have to do is just get close to them to pick them up. There's the physics of my, my weaponry is actually changing my, my trajectory. It's also still having some issues here just because I've got very little power. Those are the asteroid minerals being blown apart. Now you can also have a uh, an asteroid mining module, which will give you a much higher yield, and it's obviously much faster than just randomly shooting at rocks. We're not going to spend a huge amount of time on that. I just wanted to, to give it a you know little example there. These landmines, we're going to use our missiles, which have a much, much longer range than the fireball weapons, to trigger and then hopefully run away before we get damaged by these explosions. Because they hit very hard. It looks like we actually got a module there. Module collected. Last two sector little spots here to scan down and we'll get our secondary, actually we'll get like a get reward here. Ooh, a matter recovery device. Actually, very useful. And then our exit is up here. That's the solar wind right there on the mini map. It's pushing us, making it a little difficult to navigate back up to that exit point. Come on, ship. I think you can. I believe in you. And here's what we've hauled in so far. So we got a targeting laser. That's one of the things we started with. Um, we got score. Seems fine. Go look at our new stuff. We have an energy absorber. That's going to be useful. We can just stick that onto our ship and it'll steal energy from nearby enemies within 50 meters. Matter, re matter recovery device. Um, it's not exactly clear specifically what this does. It says the matter recovery device will increase the chance of salvaging modules. What it specifically increases the chance of salvaging is enemy modules. So it's a very, very useful thing. There's also an item called a cargo container, which increases the chance of salvaging materials. And at first you're like, well, why would I ever use this this one? Because it's got a drop rate plus of 15% versus the cargo um, container, which is like 20%. And the reason why is because the cargo container is only for your own personal goods. So we definitely want to use this because the more stuff we can salvage from enemies, the better. We'll try to offset the weight disparity since this is a three by three entity by sticking some other junk back here. Probably bring the repair bot along. This thing weighs 9 kT, 9 kilotons, I assume that's what that means. So if we put another 1 kiloton via the repair bot on this left side, maybe also stick another 
two kilotons off to this side. It's not really the ideal location for a matter, uh, an energy absorber, but it couldn't really hurt to just have it on the ship. It's going to slow us down a little bit by having the extra weight, but I'd much rather have the, the ship be um, balanced right in the center. Right there, that X, you can see our center of gravity. So if I were to put more stuff to one side, that's going to pull us to the right a little bit. And when testing, you'll notice, um, this is just the, the testing screen here. If I drive straight, I'm going to go to the right for two reasons. Number one, we've got um, center of gravity is off balance and also the, the um, what do you call it? The, not really wind, I guess. It's it's more just that, uh, oh, what's it called? Shoot, the, uh, whatever, the thing, right? The, there's more stuff hitting this thing on the side than there is sitting on this side. Whatever that word is, I don't know why I can't think of it off of my head right now. But uh, let's go ahead and grab this other solar panel. Definitely been having some power issues, so having some more power would be, be very useful. Uh, let's see, is there maybe any other way we could line this ship up a little bit better? We could shrink ourselves maybe down a little bit. Gotta reduce the size of our profile. And stick some more of the power here in the back. What if we try this? Um, you can actually have the exhaust from one set of propulsion rockets kind of overlap with the exhaust of the other propulsion rockets, so that can save you some space here. I've had quite a bit of success with having rockets um, ahead of the center of gravity so that they um, can kind of make allow you to rotate faster. If we put all of our propulsion at the back of the ship, we're going to be able to move just fine, but um, our ability to rotate is not going to be nearly as good. You'll notice here, if I try to do a, a just a quick rotate left, it's decent, right? Not, not too bad, but let's compare that to if I had put the, the the stuff in a different location here. Let's say we have um, these guys way up here, and we keep our forward-facing propulsion at the very back of the ship, as far away from the center of gravity as possible. It's the same overall setup, right? Four facing back, two facing forward, but we can now rotate eh, what seems to me to be faster. Perhaps it's anecdotal, I'm not sure. But, um... I do kind of like the idea of keeping a thin profile. So let's keep that going. We picked up a resonance cannon. Fires two entangled projectiles. Weapon range is 862 meters compared to our fireballs, which has a range of 600. So they can... It can shoot quite a bit farther. Peak damage per second is 30, with a cost of 6.7 gigawatts. Uh, energy per second, so it's a pretty good ratio. 5 to 1 is the same as our fireball weapons uh, with increased range, but the issue here is the the energy per shot is 10 gigawatts and we only have the capacity right now to store 20, so there's just no way that we have enough energy storage to actually be able to use it just yet. This is an example here of a uh, of an inferior module where there's some sort of a malice against it. Um, in this case, negative 25% damage. That's uh, rather unfortunate, so probably don't want to use something like this. Um, but let's go ahead and do the next mission. Okay, so we've got destroy mining ships, move the asteroids to the lab, defend factory for 60 seconds. Let's go ahead and do the uh, destroy mining ships because there's a pretty good chance we could get some new power. Some new solar panels. Mining ships have a lot of good stuff on them. That is a little goodie container. Definitely want to take the time to shoot that. I think we have time to, uh, to do that before these enemies will arrive. some minerals in there. Okay, we want to engage these guys one at a time, so let's try to separate ourselves from them if we can. That guy is very fast and annoying. I'm gonna hide behind these asteroids, see if we can get this other guy get cut off from his friend here. Maybe we can broadside this guy with a nice alpha strike. Oh, he's quick, he's quick. He's hard to actually get a good positioning on. He's so tiny, and he's just got the two propulsions. Two propulsion, um things, but uh, because he's so light, he's actually quite maneuverable. The other guy is stuck on the rocks. <laughs> That's very nice. It's good for me. Uh-oh. And my missile launcher got shot off. Okay, but his weapons are down. And an extra solar panel. Pretty good. I gotta play a little bit more cautious than I normally would because 
playing on harder difficulty with their 150% increased damage is, uh, it's tough. This guy's got, um, looks like projectiles, a little bit of armor on him, four solar panels, he's got a lot of power. Not really moving. I think those, uh, that asteroid has confused him a bit. And we've already picked him apart. And you notice that since I lost one of my missile launchers, my ship is now no longer symmetrical. So we are going to have some issues here. Did I actually put the, uh, yeah, the energy thing is not going to be able to really steal any energy at that, that position, is it? Piece of armor that we can pick up here. It's fragile, which is a, a malice against it. And right up there in the top left corner is the actual target itself. Uh, the mining ship that we need to go kill. Beyond that, we need to move asteroids to the lab. This is the lab. Gotta get these asteroids there. We don't have a grappling hook, which would allow us to make it quite easy, and so... Um, we would have to basically ram these toward it, just gently push them. Which is pretty dangerous with our current ship, because, um... I suppose we could try to back in gently using just these these rear-facing thrusters. And push with the cargo. I don't want to push my, with my weapons, because, uh... I don't want them to die. That would be rather unfortunate. So let's go kill this guy. What we're hoping for here is this guy's got these four little tiny micro panels on each side. They're really valuable because they provide the same amount of power as a 2x4 entity in only a 2x2 space. So we want to try to pick this guy apart without actually damaging the... Uh... Ah! Missiles. Without damaging his uh, solar panels is what I was trying to say. Alright, there goes the weapons on this side. Now we can move in and get a little bit closer here. This guy's got two command centers, so we gotta take about take about both sides. I'm willing to shoot down the armor, because I don't really care about the armor, I just want those solar panels. If we destroy the solar panels by blowing them off of him, we have a much reduced chance of actually salvaging them. And it's a direct relationship. The more damage you do to them, the less likely you are to salvage them, so... By kind of tactically picking this guy apart... We might be able to get him. And hopefully with that matter salvage device we did get in the last mission, we'll be able to pick up... Ah, crap, it just blew one up. That was not what I meant to do. One thing that's kind of fun is if you actually do have a grappling hook, you can grapple out the command center and just pull it away from all this other stuff and then go blow it up somewhere else where you're safe so you don't have to worry about accidentally shooting things. There we go. Let's check out the hall. Micro solar panel times two. Very nice. Objective complete. And we've achieved the primary objective. Alright. Um, let's really quick go down here and see if we can push some of these five asteroids into that, that lab. The reason for doing secondary objectives is that it increases the opinion of the, uh, of the factions with you. By getting their faction opinion higher, you're able to buy more modules, buy better quality modules. That kind of thing. So we're going to just kind of gently back in here. And the slower you go, the less damage you'll take. Once we've kind of gotten together with this asteroid, we'll just sort of go in reverse and push this asteroid towards that thing. There's one down. Now it's interesting to me how this thing always asks you to do five large asteroids, but it actually only wants four. <laughs> so we already have 25%. I don't know. Uh, there's just a little mathematical error there, apparently. One down, and that should be two. It's a little tricky. Maybe we can even get a twofer. Let's see. Oh, wrong way. One thing I've actually found to be quite interesting about this game is uh, the whole concept that your ship slows down the longer you stop pressing one direction. Um, pretty sure there's no... Uh, no friction in space, but, uh, I don't know, perhaps it's just sort of presumed... Presumed that you have inertial dampers or something on. I'm not sure. A robust explosive charge. Hmm. Alright, well, we've done our mission. Let's get out of here.
We did manage to salvage the missile launcher, even though I did get it blown off by the enemy. So, oh, we gotta remember between episodes or between missions here to reattach it. And this is basically what the game's all about, at least in exploration mode, is you just kind of organically evolve your ship, blow stuff up, pick up new modules, and uh, kind of go from there. That mission didn't unlock a trader for us yet, but um, soon we'll be able to do that. Looks like we have to do this mission next. Move asteroids to lab, defend the factory for 60 seconds. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and take a break here. I will do a few episodes on this. It's going to probably be like a week of type thing where we do seven episodes. Let's try. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. If you like this title, um, any suggestions you might have. It's only like $10 on Steam. There's going to be a link in the description down below if you want to give it a shot. So, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you again in the next episode. See you soon.